Hello all, good evening. Welcome back to National IAS Academy. My name is Raj Shekhar and dear friends, today we shall be looking at next 10 important topics for the upcoming UPSC Civil Services Examination as part of Focus 300 Initiative, a free initiative by National IAS Academy and team. Dear friends, so far we have successfully completed 120 topics in our previous 12 classes. Uh, like I've been saying, all these topics are specially handpicked by our experts team and are highly, highly relevant for the upcoming UPSC Civil Services Examination, which will be held on 28th of May 2023. So without wasting much time, let us begin today's class with the first topic, which is about the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. And what was the context? Recently, World Space Forum was held. It was held in a country called Austria. It was held in the country called as Austria. World Space Forum as a platform began in the year 2019. Since 2019, this forum has existed and uh, the 2022 edition was organized by two entities. One is the United Nations Office for Outer Space, uh, Outer Space Affairs in association with the government of Austria. This was the context and in this context, we need to understand two particular things. First one is World Space Forum. What is it? It's, it's, it's a forum or a platform which talks about the contributions of space, science and technology to the advancement of a sustainable world. It basically acts as a platform or a stage wherein all the, all the world leaders come and discuss about the you know, peaceful usage of outer space. So, this forum was established by the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs in the year 2019. Alright, apart from this, next fact that you need to know is about the establishment of United Nations Office for the Outer Space Affairs. It was established in the year 1958. Right? As of 2023, 64 years have been completed and it is an active part of the United Nations. Its headquarters is located in Vienna, which is in Austria. All right. Moving on to the next topic, it's about Jupiter moons. The context was recently uh, a NASA mission discovered the presence of water on Europe, uh, Jupiter's one of the moons, which is known as Europa. NASA has got more than 80 to 85 moons, and out of these moons, uh, Europa is one of the largest moons it has got. It is roughly you no know, one fourth of the size of uh, that of Earth, and slightly smaller than uh, Earth's moon. Uh, it might be fourth largest Jupiter's moon. And recently, the presence of water was confirmed by one of NASA's mission on Europa. So the question might be like the, like this by UPSC: Europa, which was recently in news, is a option. Should be it's a, a moon of Jupiter. It's a celestial body beyond uh, Milky Way galaxy. Uh, it's a, a moon on a moon of planet Saturn, or it might be uh, it it might be an asteroid, or it is an asteroid. So when uh, such options are given, please remember it is one of the greater moons of Jupiter. Recently, the context was uh, presence of water was confirmed on Europa. The recent uh, findings have said that. Uh, thin ice sheets are uh, uh, you know exist on the surface of Europa and below which there can be water in liquid format. Along with this, the findings also indicate that uh, there is a thin presence of oxygen layer on this particular moon, which might be an indicator for the presence of uh, uh, various living species in Europa. Although nothing has been confirmed yet, but since uh, the oxygen exists there, so scientists also believe that uh, uh, life in any form could be existing there. So this was about the finding of uh, water on Europa, that is uh, Jupiter's moon. Apart from that, before this, NASA's mission already have established the presence of uh, uh, you know water on planet Ceres and uh, K18b's at uh, atmosphere through Dawn mission, through a mission known as Dawn mission. So now, with the help of NASA's missions, uh, Presence of water has been confirmed on three places. One is uh, Jupiter's moon Europa, 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 and the second one is uh, dwarf planet Ceres, and the third place is uh, K218b's atmosphere. All right. So, not just that, 
you should also remember one more thing europa clipper is a mission to europa which shall be launched by nasa by 2024 to collect the objective is to collect the information about europa's atmosphere surface and interior so the module it's a module actually in orbit this module will orbit the jupiter and make several close flybys of the uh, you know moon which is europa it is a moon of jupiter please remember it's not a landing mission it's an orbiter mission right so Euro europa is regarded as uh, one of the most promising locations in the solar system to locate current circumstances that are conducive to life beyond earth despite having a very scant oxygen atmosphere okay this is about europa next is about artemis mission what is it artemis mission is basically a lunar mission it's a series of missions to be launched by the national aeronautics and space agency which is nasa first point that you need to remember is artemis is a series of missions space missions to be launched by nasa right american space agency it is concerned about lunar explorations lunar lunar explorations right so what is it it consists of series of uh, space flights including artemis artemis 1 and artemis 2 in artemis and artemis 1 unmanned spacecrafts will be sent to moon to establish basement over the moon and also please remember it is a landing mission and the best part is the significant part is that with artemis 2 nasa aims to send men or uh, people to the uh, southern surface of moon southern lunar surface of the moon so it will be launched by 2024 and uh, it also aims to send first women and first person of different color on the moon with this nasa aims to establish a base camp on the surface of moon and also a gateway gateway which is the lunar out, lunar outpost around the moon in lunar orbit to aid exploration by robots as well as astronauts all right apart from this the next potential question related to artemis artemis mission would be significant players or key players involved in this mission or key players who are part of this mission include canadian space agency european space agency and japanese aerospace exploration agency so along with nasa there are uh, three more space agencies unfortunately india is not a part of this mission but indirectly it is willing to be a part of this mission with the supply of crucial technologies to this mission but presently this space mission actively has uh, four partners including nasa second one is canadian third one is european and fourth one would be japanese aerospace agency all right next is about genome sequencing the context was recently the banen and the people whole genomes were recently sequenced by the scientists at the indian institute institute of science education and research bhopal using leaf tissue samples so what do we know what do we need uh, what do we need to know here see first thing is the context context is uh, the banen and people whole genomes were recently extracted after this we should understand what is genome what is a genome how is it different from gene and what is genome sequencing and then what is whole genome sequencing what are the differences see sequencing basically means see before that a genome consists of basically four nucleo nucleotide bases we call them as nucleotide bases we all have studied this in our uh, you know school uh, times that uh, a genome consists of four nucleotide bases that are adenine thymine cytosine and guanine adenine thymine cytosine and uh, guanine which are popularly called as atcg atcg nucleotide bases so sequencing involves establishing the sequence of these bases or the order of these bases these are all common in all human beings these genomes are common to all human beings but the difference lies in the arrangement of these bases right atcg actg or the arrangement of these bases make uh you know uh, these genomes look different from one human being to the other human being please pay attention so these four nucleotide bases when one is able to establish or uh, you know find out the order of these bases then we call that as sequencing sequencing is the 
process of establishing the order of these bases and an organism's genome base genome space order can be determined in one step via laboratory approach and it is called as whole genome sequencing understanding the order of these bases is called as sequencing and if we are successful in understanding that whole process or that order in just one process or through one uh, approach that is called as whole genome sequencing right what is whole genome sequencing it is a laboratory procedure that determines the order of the bases in the genome of an organism in one process this is the important point right in one process the significance is it uh, provides a very precise DNA fingerprint that can help link cases to one another allowing an outbreak to be detected and solved sooner. Right? Understanding the point. Then, what are the key differences between uh, a gene and a genome? See friends, basically a gene is a part of DNA molecule whereas the genome is the total DNA in a cell. Gene is a part of DNA molecule whereas the genome is the total DNA in a cell and gene is a hereditary element of genetic information whereas genome is all set of nuclear DNA. Also a gene encodes pro protein synthesis whereas genome encodes both proteins and regulatory elements for protein synthesis. Right? A genome uh, is the length of uh, length of the genome of a higher organism is about billion pa base pairs whereas the length is about length of a gene is about a few hundreds of bases. A higher organism has about thousands of genes whereas each organism has only one genome. Variations of the gene named alleles uh, can be naturally selected whereas horizontal gene transfer and duplication cause large variations in the genome and this is the different uh, basic difference between gene and genome. I hope you are understanding. Next is about WHO's Science Council. It recently held a meeting and uh, this context is sufficient to frame a particular question on uh, Science Council by WHO uh, by UPSC. All right, question might be like this. The Science Council which was recently in news was established by which of the following institutions? Is it WHO or uh, is it uh, the United States of America or is it World Economic Forum or is it the World Bank? So answer should be the World Health Organization. It was established in the year 2021 by the director of uh, World, uh, World Health Organization. The basic objective was to advise to the directors on pressing problems and developments in science and technology that may have a direct impact on global health. So soon after COVID-19, scientists and experts all over the all over world realized that they need a platform wherein they can come and sit together and discuss everything related to the latest happenings in terms of health and in terms of technology right away in real time. So this, this will definitely help all other countries to prevent uh, various pandemics such as COVID-19. Alright, so with this intention, uh, it was established in the year 2021 by WHO director. Nine of the world's top scientists and public health specialists make up the group. Make up this group. This group consists of nine members. Alright, so the council, just like I said, it offers advice, advice and uh, advisories to di various uh, to the director of WHO on pressing problems and developments in science and technology. So it basically just acts like a, a special expertise team which is uh, uh, which is there present to aid and advise the WHO director. And given the considerable effects on public health, it chose genetics as the subjects of a subject of its initial investigation. All right. What do you mean by uh, first of all? Why do you want to study ge genomics? What are the significant advantages? associated with the studying of genomics first one is newborn screening because see once you understand the genomics you can actually try and prevent some uh, genetic disorders or genetic diseases which will help in you know uh, improving the overall health of the society so it will help in understanding uh, newborn screening disease susceptibility screening and diagnosis uh, prognosis and therapeutic decision monitoring disease burden and recurrence preconception and pre -per uh, prenatal testing so even before the child is born, this particular field helps us uh, understand the genetic makeup, makeup of that particular child and also establish uh, any disease uh, related to, uh, you know, any related genetic disorder that the child might be having. All right. Next is about the National Geospatial Policy. It was announced in the year 2022 and uh, 
uh, India has set various targets under this policy. Uh, I'll discuss the key targets among them. But basically understand this, uh, understand that this policy was announced by the Ministry of Science and Technology. It's called as National Geospatial Policy. It is necessary because with a growth rate of 12.8%, India's geospatial economy is predicted to be, uh, is, pred is predicted to reach uh, around uh, 63,000 crore rupees by 2025 and employ more than 10 lakh people, which is more than 1 million people. And hence a policy in this, re in this regard is very much necessary. It basically contains guidelines for acquiring and producing geospatial data and geospatial data services including maps. All right. See, the targets are here. By 2030, the government aims to provide high resolution topographical survey and mapping which is uh, 5 to 10 centimeters for urban and uh, rural areas and 50, 50 centimeters to 100 centimeters for forests and wastelands. Also, it seeks to provide a high accuracy digital evaluation model for the entire country, which is 25 centimeters for the plain and 1.1 to 3 meter for hilly and mountainous areas. All right. Apart from that, it also seeks to enhance capabilities, skills and awareness to meet the future needs of the country. These are the targets to be achieved by the year 2030 and what are the targets that are to be achieved by the year 2035? It seeks to provide, uh, the goals are, uh, it seeks to provide high resolution or accuracy bathymetric geospatial data of inland waters and sea surface topography of shallow deep seas to support blue economy. Also, it seeks to provide survey and uh, mapping of subsurface infrastructure in major cities and towns. It also seeks to provide a national digital twin of major cities and towns. So, these are uh, the, some of the important targets which you need to remember. Next question we have is, what do you mean by geospatial technology or geospatial data? See, geo, which is, which is related to earth. Spatial means space. So, anything that is related to earth and its physical features, the study of earth and physical features or spatial features associated with it is called as geospatial technology. It uses various tools like GIS, that is Geographic Information System, GPS, that is Global Positioning System and Remote, remote Sensing for geographical mapping and analysis, right? With the help of uh, this technology, you can actually, you know, produce a great map for road or uh, uh, forecast an earthquake event or, uh, uh, you know, uh, create some maps related to agriculture in India, right? This is about geospatial technology. Next comes data empowerment production architecture. Data empowerment production architecture. Why was it in news? Recently, Niti Ayoga released this data empowerment production ar architecture. The draft was actually released in the year 2020-2021, but uh, it took time for others to uh, debate on this particular aspect and bring out the policy in this regard. So, it was recently unveiled by Niti Ayoga. What is it? It's a uh, it's a individual right which will establish, which will which needs the, the consent of an individual before sharing his or her data. See, by operationalizing a regulatory, uh, regulatory institutional and technological framework, it provides for secure data exchange and also it will provide people authority over their personal data. For example, just uh, you know, uh, imagine that my data lies with the government. With the help of other uh, biometric technology, my, my data is secure with the government of India. So, before the government of India shares this particular biometric data with, the, with others, it has to seek my information. Only with my consent, it can do so. Without my consent, it cannot, it can never ever share my personal uh, biometric data. So, this architecture that is data empowerment production architecture ensures that here data empowerment, uh, empowerment means it is the empowerment of people, people or people or citizens of India. Production means it is providing uh, complete holistic production for our data that is uh, being stored with the government. It gives users the ability to securely and conveniently access their data and share it with other organization. Right? Next is about a fifth generation uh, IT 5G open radio access network. So, it has come to the forefront. For, for with the announcement of 5G technology. See, dear friends, just like you know, to operate our mobile phones, what we need, we need technology, right? So, initially, before the advent of uh, 5G technology, a person 
a person or a company one one particular company would provide all the necessary data hardware software you know uh, as a part of the service so suppose this is the tower telephone tower it consists of hardware software everything so this radio access network or more popularly popularly called as closed uh, radio access network consisted of both softwares as well as consisted of both softwares as well as hardwares only one company was given the right or uh, one company was uh, provided sole right to uh, you know produce all those softwares or hardwares related to this radio access network but with the advent of uh, 5g technology and uh, once india got to know that uh, this monopoly could harm or could threaten the independence of india or uh, the security of india to be precise then what india thought was uh, we should break these parts you know uh, separately software part can be given to one person and hardware part can be given to some other person so this came to be known as open radio access network so now in the same tower the software uh, you know contract can be given to one particular company and the hardware contract can be given to another company so this came to be called as open radio access network and with the help of these only we we'll, we shall be able to communicate securely and most conveniently with others at right? the open radio access network often known as open ran is a crucial component of a mobile network system that connects individual devices to uh, other areas of a network through cellular radio network connections it basically has the antenna that communicate with the cell phones and other suitable devices by sending and receiving signals the signal the signal is subsequently converted to digital form and connected to the network at the ran base station so oran uses software to integrate hardware produced by many businesses just remember this all right next there was a news on hydra market it was recently shut down by a german police because of uh, uh, its dark web or dark features it's basically a dark place or underworld place uh it it refers to dark net actually so what do you mean by dark net or dark web that particular internet segment which cannot be accessed accessed legally in any country but somehow with the help of various web softwares or technology they can be accessed secretly without uh, you know coming into the notice of local uh, uh, vigilance agencies and uh, hydra market was one such place here you could go for uh, pirated software cds uh, softwares or you could you could download uh, high definition pirated movies or also uh, most uh, dangerously you can uh, you know without without exposing your name or your address or your identity you can actually buy bombs trade guns or trade weapons so that is how deadly is uh, you know deadly this marketplace can be so recently the hydra market was shut down by the german police so the question can be like this hydra market which was recently in news is a dark web internet free internet service or uh, satellite based internet ser internet services or none of the above so in that case mark dark web as the right answer okay next is about generative artificial intelligence with the advent of open uh, ai software that is chat gpt and also uh, google's bard ai technology this generative artificial intelligence has come to the forefront so the use of uh, gai is still in it, st still in its infancy but as technology develops and advances its influence is anticipated to definitely increase so the government of india is aware of the uh, this development and uh, it is in a process uh, process to bring up policy in this regard uh, to control or to monitor uh, various issues related to artificial intelligence right what basically this uh, you know generative artificial intelligence means it is a cutting edge technology advanced advancement type of artif artificial intelligence that involves creating new original content or data using machine learning algorithms it can be used to generate text images music or other types of media it works by training a model on a large data set and then using that model to generate new previously unseen content that is similar to the training data for example in simple terms if you are uh, if you want me to explain it will be like this uh, in uh, recent few days uh, we might have come across uh, you know various ai generated images of lord rama 
और मे बी दी वेरियस एपिक्स रोल्स इन एपिक रामायण एंड महाभारत सो दे आर लाइक दिस वॉट यूजर्स डू दे लॉग ऑन टू अ पर्टिक्युलर वेबसाइट एंड दे फीड द डेटा द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ लॉर्ड रामा हैज बीन गिवन इन यू नो रामायण सो दे टेक अप दैट डाटा एंड दे फीड इट इन टू द मशीन बेस्ड ऑन इट्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग इट्स लर्निंग एंड the hints or knowledge it has got it will generate ai images so that is how this generative ai works all right so this was uh, about all, all about today's class i hope uh, you have definitely enjoyed uh, enjoyed today's class if you like this class please make sure that you hit the like button and also subscribe to our channel and if you are new to this channel please make sure that you uh, tell your friends about this uh, new initiative and also i shall be giving access to the document the class document here in the description box please uh, uh, download the uh, pdf and uh, save it for further reference and also don't forget to comment your response or uh, ask your doubts in the comment section below me or our team shall personally address all those queries thank you so much for joining take care bye bye have a nice day